show everybody what I've been getting into lately, which is Windows games in Linux running through Wine. I used to use Play on Linux when I first started doing this, and ever since I just started using straight Wine, honestly, I felt like Play on Linux is kind of like training wheels. So let me show you something here. Inside my home folder, I don't have a dot wine folder. When you first run wine, it's going to create a virtual hard drive called dot wine. It's going to be basically a Windows Drive C. So what you want to do to get started here, first sudo apt, sudo apt update and then sudo apt install wine space wine tricks. You're going to need both. Now I've already got these installed, so I'm just going to run wine CFG since I don't have a wine configuration yet. Don't worry about the error messages, it's pretty much commonplace, you're going to see those all the time. Now the very first thing I always do is click on the graphics tab, go over here and check automatically capture the mouse in full screen windows. I click apply. Then I click on the Applications tab. I make sure the Windows version is set to Windows 7. For some reason, I think this changes when you install dependencies. I'm not 100% sure why. But I'm going to show you the very first things I do in my virtual hard drive. As soon as I show you the structure here. Okay, you can go in here and go into Drive C. And you see how you've got your standard Windows directories here. Your, you got your program files folder. If I go into users and I go into my username and click my documents, this is interesting to me. It actually stores documents in here, but this is a symbolic link to your real operating system. The proof is right here. If I click documents on the left hand side, same exact thing. So you can delete your .wine virtual folder and you're not going to lose your games. Or you're not going to lose your game saves. I'm just going to keep this folder open for now. Now as far as the very first things you want to do, Winetrix D3DX9, if you're going to be running a lot of DirectX 9 stuff. For certain games with older dependencies, like I'm going to say the very first Borderlands 1. Not the Borderlands 1 remaster with the high definition textures, but the first release of Borderlands 1, you're going to want to do this. Now this takes a long time to do, approximately 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here, but I want to advise you, you're going to get two different dialog boxes that come up, one for Net Framework and one for VC Run 2005, you're going to want to click through all these. I'm going to show you the next dialog box in just a minute so I can help you set it up. Okay, now it's time for the Visual C++ 2005 redistributable setup. That's what I'm calling it anyway. You want to click through these boxes, but uncheck these optional boxes. It just makes it take a lot longer and it's unnecessary. I'm going to go ahead and pause it again here. I think this takes a few minutes. That wasn't too bad actually. I think it took just under two minutes. I'm going to click exit and type exit again. That's all I'm doing for dependencies right now. I got a folder just for these. Now these are the games I got to work so far in Wine except for Faith the Trader Soul. If anyone can ever figure out how to get any version at all of this game to run in Linux and to run smoothly without crashing at all, please let me know. This is unfortunately a DirectX 8 game. DirectX 8 does not work correctly in DirectX 9. DirectX 9 tries to run DirectX 8 correctly, but it doesn't have a good time doing it. Oftentimes I run this and my system crashes in a really nasty way and it freezes up absolutely everything, so I don't even want to mess with it right now. So enough of the boring stuff, let's actually try some of this right now.
No, you're only seeing these mods because they were in my My Documents folder, which I mentioned does not get erased if you delete your Wine folder because the links are symbolic. However, your App Data folder does not have symbolic links. A lot of your save games are probably going to be stored in that folder, so if you do delete your Wine Virtual folder, you're definitely going to want to back up that App Data folder as well. Now I personally run Torchlight 2 with Synergies mod. This might get a little bit loud, but maybe I can do something about it real quick. Where are the options? Okay. I'm trying to get this more on video volume. It works smooth. Well, smooth enough, I'm going to say. Not 100%. I'm seeing a typically lower frame rate than what I usually see, and I think it's just because I'm recording this as a video, so sorry for any frame rate drops. I found out that just about everything works in here the same way it does in Windows. You just have to have the files set up exactly. There's a slight problem I forgot to mention. Wine does not suspend your screensaver by default. And when it goes to switch windows, you suddenly you suddenly lose mouse and keyboard access to your game. So this is what you're gonna wanna do. Pseudo app and install caffeine. Just do this, I don't need to, I've already got it. And all you need to do once you install this Go up to Accessories and click Caffeine Indicator. Left click on the icon and click Activate. That's going to make sure your screensaver doesn't come up and you don't have to go through all that unfortunate stuff. Now we're going to try Diablo 2 with D2SE Mod Manager and this is probably the last one I'm going to demonstrate for now. When I say all these mods work, all these work. I'm going to go ahead and run this test real quick or it's going to keep griping at me that I haven't done it yet. For anyone who's ever played Diablo 2, this is pretty fast. This is my first run, that's why I'm getting this. It's, program it's programming this information into my Windows registry right now in my wine virtual hard drive so let's run that one more time now I'm gonna go configure glide probably wanna put this in English settings desktop resolution I leave all this other stuff alone I go to renderer I change texture memory to 108 megabytes the highest allowable size change buffer texture size to Two, 2 megs by 2 megs, I guess, or 2K by 2K. 32-bit rendering, bilinear filtering, and that's usually all I ever change. Then I click Quit. Let's go ahead and try this out in a second here, but I just wanted to show you. I've got all these mods on here, and they all work. I'm just going to go ahead right now, and I'm going to run the normal Diablo 2 1.13 version C. However, I am using Pluggy, so keep that in mind. Let's get through the intro. Jeez, that is loud. I need to see if I can lower the volume. Okay, that's a little better, especially for the purposes of a video. Now when you first go into Diablo 2, you're going to want to change your resolution to 800 by 600. 
jack up your gamma a few boxes and then just drag your contrast all the way up. I personally think it looks a lot better and it doesn't look like the colors a are so greeting, bled out. Stranger. Talk to War Eve, listen to him if you want to or don't. Hit the R key and run. Go talk to a car, get I your am first a car. quest. There's a place. That's it pretty much. So you see here if I check my skills menu. This is not normal for Diablo 2. This is because I'm using Pluggy. I have one point on Ray's skeleton. So I could just kill something and start off on that right now. You can't normally do that without Pluggy. Pluggy's pretty amazing. That's all I feel like demonstrating right now because if I run some of the graphically heavier or more intensive games, I'm just going to get a pretty crappy frame rate anyway since I'm video recording. Anyway, thank you for watching my video and I'll see you in the next one.